Ron Mosher is standing by from the Utica Observer Dispatch. A busy, uh, busy time right now because all those Whitesboro football players can't move on to basketball and wrestling just yet. <laughs> good morning, Ron. Hey, good morning, Bill. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I've got to put my basketball and wrestling previews on hold here, and and uh, you know the basketball players that don't that don't play football, they can they can blame Whitesboro for that because uh, you know I've been. Uh, Riding that bandwagon for a while because uh, you know it's it's the story yeah. every week so yeah. far. So uh, uh, yeah, I've seen Whitesboro probably now because they're still playing more than any other football team, and uh, uh, they just keep uh, you know they don't surprise me anymore. Especially Pat Gaylor, I, I can't say enough about the kid who didn't play football the last two years, and now suddenly he be- he becomes such a sudden impact player for for the Warriors that it's uh uh every week he does something special and this past week was no different uh you know that's 45 to 18 game but it was six nothing Union Endicott for a while and it was only 14-6 at the half Mm. but those 14 points really Mike Sarasulo two of his uh four touchdown runs but both of them were set up you know both of them were set up by Gaylor catches two spectacular catches and actually, he made a third that was nullified by a penalty in the end zone that would have been a touchdown. So uh, uh, I can't say enough about this uh, the senior who didn't play football the last two years. He's a uh, standout on the baseball team as a center fielder and a left-handed pitcher. But uh, what he's done for this football team, again, if you looked at the fine print, which is the scoring summary, Pat yeah. Gaylor's name does not show up. But I'm I, I'm really convinced that he changed the complexion of that game the other wow. night with those catches, including one, Bill, right before the half. In the final minute of the half, fourth and 29. I saw this. He uh, catches replay. a pass for 32 yards with one hand yeah. laid out on the ground at the one-yard line, and, and Whitesboro scores in the next play. So, that that uh, catch was something oh. you see. I don't want to, I don't want to like overdo this a little bit, but it's the type of catch you see in the NFL. I mean, well, that was an it, incredible catch. Without a doubt. And I wrote in my story that it was Odell Beckham-like. And yeah. not because I'm a Giants fan, but uh, yeah. Yeah. it really was. He laid out and with his right hand, hauled it in. And uh, and that's under double and triple team coverage. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, it was it's just incredible. And, and he's doing that every week now. And he, I say it was Odell Beckham-like only physically because I'll tell you what. Talking to the kid after the game, he downplays it. I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. sort of like ho hum. It, it, it was it was an okay catch, you know. Yeah. But uh, and he's not showboating or hot dogging after it. He just goes back to the huddle, and it's all business, which is really what this Whitesboro team is is, is built like too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mike Sarasulo, the running back, four more touchdowns, 140 plus yards, and those are tough yards. And he, uh, you know. He just like takes it in stride. It's not all about him. This is this is definitely a, a team thing that got going right now. And uh, you know they're eleven and zero, and they one more win, and they're back to the state championship game for the first time in exactly twenty years. Wow! And I, I so the way this goes is they'll play next Friday at eight back at uh, Cicero North Syracuse. Is that correct? That's right against Greece Athena, who's also eleven and zero. Out from uh, Rochester Way, and yeah, from yeah. what I understand, they are very, very, very good, obviously, and uh, um, it should be a great matchup. I think Whitesboro's still ranked number three in the state behind two Long Island teams. By the way, mm. you know, Long Island plays their own, right, own right, championship. Right, right. They don't come up here, so, so right. it's Whitesboro's number three, and I think Greece Athena's number four, for whatever state rankings yep. are worth, but uh, they're both 11-0, and all, let's put it that way, and, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention you know, they only completed two passes the other night. They didn't throw many. But Dante Filetti, the quarterback, was under duress, and he, and he put it on the money both times. In traffic, uh, Gaylor makes the play. So, yeah. uh, wow. Wow. you know, hats off to those two. They've got a connection going. And teams know it, and they're still beating them. Uh, tell me, is uh, is anybody alive uh, yet in, the, in playoffs outside football? I know that... Uh, New Hartford lost over the weekend in the uh, in the state soccer finals. Um, uh, yeah, the soccer finals for semi- girls and boys were this past yep. weekend. I actually covered Poland Central girls in the Class D state championship game yesterday at uh, at at my alma mater, Cortland State. It was mm-hmm. 
uh, it was a two nothing loss to Wheatland Chilai out from Rochester, and uh, but uh, a great game. And and I'm telling you, uh, and again, I'm a small town kid, but uh, from way back, and I mean way back. But uh, yeah, when you it reminded me of Dodgeville football, New yeah. York Mills basketball, that kind of atmosphere. Because yeah, yeah. in Poland, let's face it. Soccer puts Poland on the map, yeah, boys no and girls, and yep. uh, they've got a great thing going. The girls' soccer coaches, Tom Basil, the boys' soccer coaches, the athletic director, Greg Haber, and the whole town comes out. I, it was a great atmosphere, and it you know they lose two to nothing in the state championship game, and it seemed like all of Poland was there at the railing at the stadium applauding them and saying, great job, we're proud yeah, of you, wow. and, and with the banners and everything. Yep. and. Uh, you know, meeting them at the bus after when they when they walk away from a loss. Uh, I have to tell you, the coach Tom Basil and and his players in tearful defeat were couldn't be more gracious and uh, uh, polite. And you know, they gave me their time when I'm sure it was tough to talk to right, a reporter right. at that time. So, uh, also, uh, no, hats off yep. to Poland. Uh, if you drive through Poland, Bill, you'll see on every um, every telephone pole. There's, uh, I, I imagine it's uh, like plywood yep. soccer ball, and with each player's name and number as you wow, go down the street. That's it, really it's, cool. Uh, it's a great uh, feeling. They really embrace the soccer program there because, let's face it, it's a smaller school. They don't have yep. football. Yep. I mean, soccer's what they do, and they do it well, and believe me, they're going to be back. They're very, very young. So it, it was a good atmosphere. I, I can't I can't say that I'm a soccer expert, but it was uh, uh Quite it, was a, it was a yeah. good day to go out there and cover them, and, and right. they deserve a lot of credit. All right, Ron Mosier, you can read all about it in the OD, uh, UticaOD.com. Ron, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next week. Again, Whitesboro playing 8 p.m. on Friday night out at CNS. Yeah, and you, and you might want to just reserve the day after Thanksgiving, 3 p.m. at the Carrier Dome, just in case. That could be a Black Friday to remember for, yeah, uh, for it Whitesboro. It could be state championship time right, right there. Good stuff, Ron. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, Ron Mosier. Also, uh, over the weekend, New Hartford went down in the boys' state uh, soccer finals. Um, Little Falls was uh, defeated in girls' soccer, uh, 4-1 by Port, uh, Port Jefferson. And nearby Casanova, I believe they might have won in the field hockey, um, but uh, not necessarily within our, uh, our group of schools. 